Rebuilding habitats for wildlife that disappeared years ago. New islands are rising up out of our waterways, built out of sand and silt that would otherwise clog the water. Kelly, we got a behind the scenes look at the first steps in a new dredging project and what goes into digging up and spewing out the sludge that keeps boats from passing through. The work costs millions of dollars to take the muck from our waterways and use it to rebuild islands. We're heading out to the navigation channel that runs between Ocean City, Maryland and Chincoteague, Virginia. A channel that over the years has become fairly quiet. There's not much boat traffic here, maybe a few crabbers and recreational fishermen, but coming through this channel means slow moving. They can be able to get to a certain extent, but then it just gets uh, difficult to be able to get in certain more sections. Uh, different sections have uh, more, are more shallow than others. But now these massive machines are quite literally digging new life into the channel. Once he gets that area clean to a certain depth, he swings all the way over to one side, drops one spud, raises the other one, and then that, that advances him eight feet. The material, pretty much just like a vacuum, gets sucked up right out of the channel, and they move the material via pipeline. It's down on the bottom of the uh, bay and then floats up to the top, and that's where they move the material to be able to create the island out of it. Creating new habitat in the form of new land. We're creating four islands. Uh, we're creating two brand, three brand new islands, and we're going to restore uh, Robin's Marsh. Sand and sediment once clogging the channel floor, now above water and soon to be home to a number of animals. We're creating new habitat and hopefully bringing in more species and maintaining the species that are currently here. And all the uh, recreational boaters that want to come down here being able to keep, keep the channel clear. The new islands will rise four feet above high tide, but they aren't just random piles. They're specifically filling in historic footprints of islands that were once here. When the channel was dredged in 1933, the material was placed overboard. So islands, there was a whole chain of islands that were created in the center of Foxen Bay. Since it's been over 80 years since that happened, um, most of the islands have eroded away. The last time this channel was dredged was in the 60s. The usual wear and tear, plus the horrific aftermath of Sandy, piled about two feet of muck on the channel floor. Once we dredge, we'll bring it down to the authorized depth of six feet. And if we go two foot of over depth to eight feet, so we can be able to ensure that the channel's clear for boaters to get through. A $5.5 million project moving swiftly through the channel, creating new life and new opportunities for a channel that has grown quiet. The project is paid for through Sandy funding, but that's not the only money the group is getting in the aftermath of the hurricane. The team is also working on the seawall restoration, fixing the cracks that span the wall from normal wear and tear, as well as the aftermath of the 2012 hurricane. Both projects are going on simultaneously. The Ocean City project is not the only dredging project building up islands in our waterways. The Water Resources Reform and Development Act of 2014 passed in June. It allowed some projects reusing silt from our waterways to expand. One of those projects is rebuilding Poplar Island. Sediment dredged up from the shipping channels leading into Baltimore is restoring the island. One of the questions that we get all the time from visitors is, the island had eroded to three to five acres you know, back in the 1990s. What's, what would stop that from happening again? Well, the, the main difference here is that we've armored the shoreline. This dredging project has been going on for 16 years. It is about more than rebuilding a habitat. The economic benefit is also there. Engineers say if the dredging stopped, barges coming into the port of Baltimore would not be able to carry as much and would need to make more trips.